Mr. Mr. Erico? Mr. Rashad, roll call. Yeah, Mr. Erico? Here. Mrs. Ward? Here. Mrs. Mrs. Pank? Here. Mr. Brescher? Here. Mr. Patel? Here. Mrs. Conway? Here. Dr. Chen? She's not oh, here. She here? She's not here yet? No. Oh, I thought I saw her. Okay. All right, so everybody's here except for Mr. She, Mrs. Maroney, and Dr. Chen. Thank you, Mr. Rashad. Uh, opening statement, New Jersey Open Public Meetings Act was enacted to ensure the right of the public to have advance notice and of and attend to attend meetings of public bodies at which any business affecting their interest is discussed or acted upon. In accordance with the provisions of this act, the Edison Board of Education has caused notice of this meeting to be published by having the date, time, and place thereof posted in the Board of Education's administrator offices. Copies of these notices were sent to the Home News Tribune and the Star Ledger on January 3rd, 2019. The public may participate at regular meetings in accordance with the bylaws and the applicable state regulations. Um, at this time, I think we're going to go right into closed session. So if I can have a motion to go into closed session. I'm going to read the resolution. Oh, read the resolution first. <laughs> Whereas Section 8 of the Open Public Meetings Act, Chapter 231, Public Doors of 1975, permits the exclusion from the pub, from the, of the public from the meeting in certain circumstances, and whereas this public body is of the opinion that such circumstances presently exist, and therefore be resolved by the Board of Education of the Township of Edison as follows. One, the public shall be excluded from discussion of and action upon the hearing specified subject matters. Two, the general nature of the subject matter to be discussed is as follows. Attorney, client privilege discussion regarding board policies, litigation brought on by former employees, SLEO contract, township litigation, student matters, Edison Wetlands Association contract, ETEA grievances, PERC and unfair labor practices, and personnel matters. On the personnel's, personnel will be discussing resignations and terminations, appointments, changes of status, reappointments, transfers, substitute staff, summer secretarial staff, and extended school year. Three, it is anticipated at this time that the above stated subject matter should be made public at such time as need, the need for non-disclosure no longer exists and for this resolution shall take effect immediately. Motion, Mrs. Conway, Mrs. Patel. Mrs. Conway? Yes. Mr. Patel? Yes. Mr. Brescher? Yes. Mrs. Pang? Yes. Mrs. Ward? Yes. Mr. Erico? Yes. Well, yes. We're going to be going into closed session. We should be about an hour. If we're going to be any more than an hour, we'll try to come out and uh, make sure you're aware of it. All right? Thank you. Okay. Uh, motion to reconvene. Okay. Mr. Erico, second. Okay. Uh, Mrs. Patel? Dr. Chen? Yes. Mrs. Conway? Yes. Mrs. Patel? Yes. Mr. Brescher? Yes. Mrs. Peng? Yes. Mrs. Ward? Yes. Mr. Erico? Yes. Mr. Shee? Yes. Well, yes. So uh, uh, now let's go on to the um, um, regular agenda. So first up, the board uh, report. Can I have a motion on that? Okay. Mr. Erico, second. Mr. Patel again. Board secretary report. Dr. Chen? Yes. Mrs. Conway? Yes. Mrs. Patel? Yes. Mr. Brescher? Yes. Mrs. Peng? Yes. Mrs. Ward? Yes. Mrs. Terrerico? Yes. Mr. Shea? Yes. Oh, yes. All right. Now we're going to the resolutions. But before we open up for public comments, so I'll have, uh, you know, Dan go through that. The pers um, yeah, personnel, we, you can skip that. And, uh, then you can go to the uh, administration and the field trip and the finance. Can All right. Do that? Under administration, uh, we only have one resolution. Yeah. It's uh, for the uh, approval of the evaluation rubrics and a principal practice instrument. We have to do this annually. It's the same one we had last year. Um, however, I think it was very effective, and we'd like to have the board approval one more uh, for another year for next year. Uh, following that, under curriculum instruction. Um, we have uh, one field trip. It's for uh, 100, 103 students and one advisor, Medicine High Marching Band, going to the YMC Camp Bernie, uh, Fort Murray, New Jersey. Uh, uh, yes, there's a marching band competition going on, on over there. It's, it's August 23rd to August 27th, so obviously there's no instructional days. The school's not in session at this point, and there's no cost to the district. Um, next, under finance, we have uh, several financial. Uh, resolutions. Uh, the first one's for the final transfer for the year. For, we're closing out 2018-19. Um, as I mentioned last month, uh, or at the last meeting last Monday, we had one more transfer for the transportation for Ed Service Commission. 
uh, for special education for 225,000. Um, I took the money from the health savings we had from the premiums. And the only other transfer there is is $116,500. And we're taking it from the athletic salary line because our officials are not on our payroll. They're not really employees. So they want, it to, they want us to put that as a purchase service because we're purchasing their services. Uh, so I'm just moving it to the purchase line and taking it out of the salary line. That's the only two things we're having on the transfer. Uh, we added one thing to the agenda. We just got the information today um, for the homeless children's tuition. We received back refund, uh, re reimbursement from the state for all of our homeless students. Uh, we're going to be receiving uh, for 1819 $936,848. Last year we got a little over a million, so it's down a little bit, but it's based on the number of students we have that are considered homeless in our district. Item number three is um, regarding the special election that we're looking to have the board approve for December 10th. Um, it's in the amount of 199500000 The PEC letters were the preliminary eligible cost letters is what they're called. were received from the state, so they approved it already. We do have uh, our bond council here, Lisa Gorov from Wellens, Goldman and Spitzer to give us timelines on that, on this, and we also have our architect here <coughs> if any questions. Lisa, can you uh, give them a, give the board a, and the public a, a breakdown of where we go from here? Yes. And what the resolution is about, and yes. you, you wanna go up to the podium? Oh. There's a microphone up there. Thanks. Uh, thank you, good evening. The resolution that you have in front of you tonight um, is a resolution that does a few things with respect to uh, the proposed referendum. The first thing is that it accepts the preliminary eligible costs of the Department of Education. You receive those determinations in letters. I would let the board know, um, they probably know already, but every aspect, every improvement of your proposed project was deemed eligible for the highest level of aid. Uh, from the state, so it was all deemed to be um, educationally necessary. Um, the reason why the eligible costs do not equal the costs is because the state puts a, I will call it an artificial governor on the cost per square foot of $143 for new construction. So notwithstanding that the um, dollar amount differs, all aspects of the proposed projects are eligible. The resolution authorizes your business administrator to communicate the acceptance of these eligible costs to the state. It also um, authorizes the administration and the board's professionals to take actions to preserve the date of December 10th, 2019 for a special election. As you know, there are only certain dates during the year that you can conduct a special election. December 10th is one of them. Finally, the resolution appoints the firm of Acacia Financial Group as a financial advisor to um, undertake financial analysis uh, and financial advisory services in connection with the proposed issuance of obligations under this referendum. The board sought proposals, received proposals from uh, very um, qualified financial advisors in the state, and this um, proposal det was determined to be the least expensive for the board and a very, very qualified financial advisor. Um, that is what this resolution accomplishes looking forward on um, the path to the referendum. Um, the next step of the board would to be adopt a resolution actually setting forth the ballot question, which I will draft and I will circulate uh, amongst the board's architect and administration to ensure that we are accurately describing the project. We would anticipate that that resolution would be adopted at the board's either next or September meeting. Plenty of time to make the December election and that the voter communication uh, 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 effort, uh, education effort would occur um, along that time period as well until the December election. Okay, thank you. Can I ask a question? Yes, go ahead. Yeah. We're talking about you're, you're going to get us the rates for the bond, correct? You're going to, the so rates for the bond. It's financial. 
Uh, I'm going to get the what? I'm sorry. Oh, uh, you're talking about the rates for the bond. The interest yeah. rates? Yes. Okay, so I'm the bond attorney for the district, so I work um, in the laws and get, getting you to the referendum and the sale of the bonds. The financial advisor works on that aspect, but I will tell you that the interest rates for the bonds will be struck and fixed when we sell the bonds. That would likely be in a few tranches starting uh, probably first quarter next year if the referendum passes. I will tell you that interest rates in the market are at incredible lows right now, probably um, some of the lowest rates we've seen, probably 20-year debt, 25-year debt in the two and a half, 2.7 percent range. So it's a very, very advantageous time to borrow money right now as a, as a school district. And, and you'll break those bonds up into because some of the projects we might do in, in, in two phases type of thing because we need to do one part yes. to move to another part. So I would guess that once the financial advisor gets engaged, we will have meetings to look at the drawdown schedule for the projects, when they would be undertaken. So you're not borrowing money in advance, right. to it, far in advance of when you need it, or more than what you need. So you have to bid these projects, and if they come in <coughs> lower, you don't need to borrow the whole amount. So this is a not to exceed amount. So there's a, a fair amount of work that goes into planning that. It, the financial plan gets put in place before the referendum so that that can be communicated to the voters so there's a plan um, and there's an estimate of an interest rate so that will all be done, yes, before December. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, I spoke with Dan on this. Um, we're not going to borrow the $189 million one shot. So just based on the uh, the schedule of the project, we're going to, you know, borrow like $50 million by another, you know, another $80 million just based on the schedule. We're not going to, you know, pay interest rate just for nothing. So basically that's what we're going to do. And um, you mentioned that uh, we can get some um, uh, um, debt relief on this, right? Uh, based on the, the calculation, how much debt relief we can have uh, for this uh, 180, 189.5? So the state is going to pay you approximately 34% aid. And I say 34% on eligible costs instead of 40%, and I want to explain why. Your projects are eligible for 40% aid on the eligible costs. The state, since 2011 has prorated that aid at 85%. So 85% of 40% is 34%. So the state will be paying 34% of the principal and interest. So think of it as a, if you have a mortgage payment, the state would be paying 34% of that mortgage payment, um, principal and interest. Which is, well, <clears throat> okay, I'm, uh, I'm trying to find that number here. I apologize. I think it's, a, well, just the principle, 64.43 million dollars. You have it, you have it there? I don't have 64.43. Okay, so 64. Let me just, let me just double. Is that 34? That's without interest. 189.5 times 34%, right? Three, four. 34% so, so start with that. So 189.5 times 34%, That's right? That's correct. Yeah, 0. 0.34, 64.43. Okay, so the state will be paying $64 million towards the principal plus 34% of the interest that you pay to. So the state will be paying more than $64 million towards the project because the $64 million just relates to the the capital cost, the principal cost. And Did you factor question? in the fact yeah, that yeah. it's only on one hundred forty-three dollars a square per square foot? Because I think the I think the number I remember is was thirty-one million over thirty years. <coughs> so they're only going to give you they're only going to give you thirty-four percent of the one forty-three. Like the doctor's office. <coughs> yes, thirty-four percent of, of your. Oh, I'm sorry, it's thirty-four percent of your eligible costs, and your eligible costs are. <coughs> Gene, is that one fifty-eight? One hundred fifty-eight million. No, that's I don't. I don't have the exact eligible. Million million less than I'm sorry. Seventy-seven point seven million dollars are the eligible costs. 
So it's 34% of the 77 million plus 34% of the interest. It's a couple million. So what, what, no, let, let's see what that, what's that? What You're right, Dan, the 143 brought down the, the cost. What is 70, what is the total, I'm sorry? 77.7 .7 million. 0.7 times 34. 26.41. So about 27 million plus 34% of the interest. We can get those numbers for you, certainly from the financial advisor. So ba basically it's not 189, so we're, we're gonna knock down by about 20, somewhere about $25 million on that, right? So the, the actual, the taxpayer is gonna pay is, 189 minus whatever that that the 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 that's uh, that's correct. okay yes. that'll be over a 30 year period that we're paying the, the yes. loan off right mm -hmm. yes. thought up front yes okay yes <clears throat> okay again uh, yes yes go ahead um if we're borrowing the money Elizabeth in waves Le Elizabeth mm -hmm. I'm sorry if we borrowed the money in waves mm -hmm. because we're following the interest rate. We don't want to pay interest if the money's not being utilized mm -hmm. right away. Mm -hmm. How far in advance would we have to do this? Mm -hmm. So the financial advisor, when, when they're appointed, will look at your drawdown schedule, work with the architect to see what kind of chunks you're ne going to need at what period of time. There will be an analysis done. L I'm going to make this up. Let's say you need $70 million for the first tranche. The financial advisor will say, okay, so you need to borrow 70 million for the first tranche, but where are interest rates? Are they going up or are they going down? If she senses or he senses that interest rates are gonna be stable or going down, then they might say only borrow the 70 million now. But if over that, because we have to spend the money within three years after you borrow it, but if in that three-year period you're actually going to be maybe spending 80 or 90 million, the financial advisor say, might say, well, even though you're not going to spend that extra 20 until the third year, it might make sense to borrow it now while rates are low. So again, these answers are, you're asking are good. The, the more you push off the borrowing to the end, the more interest rate risk you do undertake. So that's why you're getting a financial advisor to kind of advise you on that balance of but we're also taking a chance that we're paying interest on money that we're not using right away so it's a it's a it's game. a balance so let's say you were to borrow at two and a half percent two point seven percent three percent now and interest rates start going up and you've borrowed a little extra money like a little more than what you need in a year or two you're going to be earning interest on those proceeds as well so while they sit in the bank they're going to be invested are you going to earn the bond rate? Maybe not, but maybe you're going to earn 2%. So that's really the financial advisor's role to put together a financial plan for you based on <coughs> anticipated interest rates and your projected drawdown. Can, let me, you, now you are, can you tell us again? So my name is Lisa and you're with Borab, and I'm with Wilentz, Goldman, and Spitzer, and I'm your, your bond, bond counsel. Right. So now this financial person, yes. right, falls under you, correct? You hire them? No, 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 they're it's directly hired hire. by the board. We had, uh, we had a, Dan, you wanna go? Yeah, yeah, talk, we, yeah. We, got a, we sent a proposal out, we received a couple of uh, Acacia and Phoenix uh, advisors, financial advisors, and I had Lisa actually go through them to find out which one was more advantageous to the board, and I told her I don't care, I worked for both of them, so either one of them would be fine, and she told me that Acacia's pr uh, proposal came in much better than Phoenix's did. It's much easier. Okay, so y your sole purpose is just to put those bonds out to the market and sell them. So my job, unlike your general counsel, I do a very a thin slice of the law. I do securities law and the bond law that you're required to follow and tax law, that's all. And so my job is to guide you through this sort of persnickety uh, special education, uh, special election law to get you to a special election. Once it passes, my job is then kicks in the securities law and the tax law to get the bonds issued bond is a fancy word for a loan 
um, get them um, issued legally, because I give an opinion to bondholders that it was done correctly. And, and you, I give that opinion to you. Too. And the financial advisor. Yeah, What's that? Dan, you want to? Yeah. They, tell they us work up. They, they actually work up the actual finances for you and, and advises you when the when the best, the most advantageous time to actually borrow the money and, and to work with the architect to see how much we need at what point in time to try to minimize our costs by borrowing the money only when we need it. And they work. That's what they work on. Yeah. And, we, and who do they speak to? And and let me tell you. Let me because if if they don't speak to the board, but they just speak to to you or to the architect. They speak to us. Do they speak to the entire board? Uh, we could, but they in the past when we had we had the um, the borrowing for the two two schools. I forgot which. I think Woodbrook they came Mello. to the whole the, to the whole board. If I remember. Yeah, correctly. we had at that time it was a lease purchase, and we had to have a, yeah. a public hearing on that. Yeah, right. but they, they they did come. It's a similar kind of a function. Uh, they did come and speak to the whole board. And are are they going to take our concerns as to how we would like to see it done, or is this strictly decided by? Um, uh, look, w when we did the our, our overcrowding, right, and we came up with it, a lot of board members weren't part of the whole plan. Let's say um, it, it was done by by the outside vendors. They came up with their plan and then they presented it to us, and that's what we just approved. We didn't get to modify or to make changes to it or or anything like that. And I'm saying with the financial aspect of it. Is it going to be the same thing where they're just going to come up with their plan and it's something that we're just going to approve, or is it something that we're going to? Uh, I'm I'm pretty sure they're going to have multiple meetings of the finance facility committee because that's what we had. They had they had the multiple meetings with us when I was on it um, when we talk when we do the lease purchase uh, for the two additions. Okay. Yeah. So of course we can whatever concerns we have we can you know share with them and um, let's put that into consideration. Yeah, one the best uh, best rate. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And then we can work out the timing because then we can work on the details on the on the designs. Then we can look at the timing and, and how much money we want to borrow and stuff like that. Right, and I know that, and and it came up just because I know we had Lincoln School and we talked about how we had to do that like in two phases. Um, yes. Because you got the trailers there Correct. now, type of thing. Yep. Okay. Okay. Any other board member questions for for Lisa? For for Jean. Okay. Thank you. All right. All right. Thanks. So please. you might come. You might need to come back with public comments. You know. All right. So don't move too far. Okay. On the finance agenda number four, uh, this is the uh, non-public security proposals uh, POs that came in from some of the non-public schools. We need the board to approve those in advance. Those that's the money we get from the state that goes directly to the non-public schools. Item number five is the non-public school technology monies that we received from the state. There are two schools that uh, have some small POs for that. And then I uh, provided to the board a copy of the bill list for the month of June in the amount of $36,760,333.88. Uh, each one of the board members got a copy of that, and I've got a call from a few of you about some of the things on there. If anybody has any questions, just call me. And that pretty much wraps up the agenda for tonight. Okay. Thank you. All right, so now we open up for public comments, but before we go there, I just want to make a correction here. Uh, if you look at your personal agenda, um, on page number three, uh, the last person, uh, Daniel uh, Nauseous, did I pronounce her name correctly? She, she, what is it, how to pronounce it? Conscious, okay, Daniel Conscious, she's gonna stay in the current building, so there's no transfer, okay? So she will stay in the current building because the um, the enrollment situation uh, changed in the um, past uh, several weeks. So she will stay uh, in the building. So she's she's um, she's she crossed off. Okay. So with that, open up for public comments on these resolutions. Anybody? See none. So let's move on. <coughs> First up, the personnel agenda. I always uh, do that separately. Can I have a motion on personnel agenda? Okay, Dr. Chen, second. Okay, Mrs. Penn. Dr. Chen. Um, no to James DeVivo, yes to everybody else. Where are we, are we on this yet? 
Mrs. Conway? Mrs. Conway. Um, yes to everybody, no to James DeVivo, no to Nancy Banos transfer, and no to Marissa Freeman's transfer. Okay, thank you. Mrs. Patel? Um, yes to everything except the transfer of Marissa Freeman. Mr. Brusher? Um, yes. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, and also no to the transfer of uh, James, or uh, Simon of James DeVivo. DeVivo, sorry. Oh, okay. All right. Okay, Mr. Brusher? Yes, on everything except James DeVivo and Marissa Friedman. Okay. Mrs. Peng? Um, yes, not everyone. Um, you know, um, James DeVivo, Marisa Freeman, um, Nancy Barnos. What was the last one? Nancy Barnos. Oh, Barnos? Okay. <coughs> okay. Mrs. Ward? Uh, yes, on everyone except Nancy Banos, Marissa Freeman, and Cindy J. How about Mr. DeVito? How about six nose or whatever? six nose or whatever. Okay. Uh, Mr. Erico? Okay. Um, no on um, Ms. Banos. No on Marissa Freeman, and that's it for now. Okay, Mr. Shea. Uh, yes, for everybody except uh, um, James DeVivo. Okay, so I have uh, one, two, three, four, five, six from uh, not voting for Mr. DeVivo, so he's does not pass. Uh, for uh, Nancy Banos, Seven. I have uh, Seven. Uh, well, Teresa Ward didn't. Uh, yeah. yeah. I voted yeah. Nancy didn't. Yes, right, uh, right. I'm the only one. Dan, get the tally first. I know. Okay. So I, I have uh, one, two, three, Seven. four, yeah, five, Seven. six. Seven. Yes. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm missing somebody then. So I had. Teresa's the only one who, who, who didn't vote for the people. Okay. All right. Well, she, he doesn't carry. Yeah, it's a carry. Uh, yeah. Now, Banos, I have uh, four that voted not to move. Three. Nancy Banos, four, which means we all, have, we all we don't have five. We only had eight board members here. Can you tell us who didn't vote for um, Banos? Banos. Uh, we only have eight people here. Yeah, Shannon. This is Peng, Mr. Brescher, um, Mrs. Ward, and Mrs. Conway voted not to move Banos. I did too. Oh, not, oh, I'm sorry, not to move. I'm sorry. He voted, I thought Mr. Arco's vote was everything except for Banos, DeVivo, Freeman. Is that correct? That's what he said. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I got Mr. Arco is not voting for Freeman. <coughs> right, not to move. Right, correct. And not to move Banos. And not to move Banos, okay. That's All right. five now. That should be five. Okay, so with Banos, then I have uh, we we don't have five votes for him for that move, so he, she's not transferred. Right. Correct. Yeah. And Freeman, I got one, two, three, she four, five, five six, six that voted not to move Freeman, so she doesn't get transferred either. Correct. Uh, but uh, Cindy J does move because Teresa Ward didn't want to vote no on her. Correct. Correct. Okay. <coughs> All right. So now we have the um, the. No, I'm sorry. The, the remaining of the uh, agenda, which is the administration, the evaluation rubrics, and the principal uh, practice uh, instrument, the uh, curriculum instructions, field trip, and the finance resolution. So the items 
two, three, and four. Can I, can I have a motion? Okay. Mr. Erico, second. Okay, Dr. Chen. Dr. Chen? Yes. Mr. Conway? I'm sorry, could you repeat that? Th the three, repeat everything three. remaining. Administration, field uh, curriculum uh, and instruction, and finance. Yes. Mrs. <laughs> Patel? Yes. Mr. Brescher? Yes. Mrs. Peng? Yes. Mrs. Ward? Yes. Mr. Erico? Yes. Mr. Shea? Yes. Oh, yes. All right, so move on. We have the two committee reports. So uh, the revised one, right? You revised it? Okay. A couple words. That okay, was all. Cool. Uh, we'll do finance and facilities first. We had our meeting on 7 9 19 at 4 p.m. at the Education Center. In attendance was Richard Brescher, Ralph Errico, Teresa Ward, Yuna Chen, Paul Saxon, Damas Showed, Rich Pepe, and Ken Taylor. David Blank from Scorinchi and Hollenbach discussed the details regarding the bid of the solar panels on James Monroe School. The bid will be advertised during the July and be awarded at the August 26th board meeting. Peter Capisano and Tara Donnelly from USA Architects provided a status report of the FDR modular classroom edition. The permits have been issued, but there's been some unstable soil discovered which is being remediated currently. The project is scheduled to be completed by 9-1-19. And Dan Sapton from SSP Architects gave the committee a status report for Woodrow Wilson Middle School modular classroom projects. The contractor had applied for the building permits, being that those modular <coughs> classrooms will be placed on the parking lot. There will be much less site work required. The classrooms are scheduled to be completed on 9-1-19. And just to let everyone know, you can see that on our website, it seems that we have cameras up that are available to look at the sites. Perry and Robert DePezzi from Turf Field represented the rendering of a plan for replacing Edison High School's baseball field with a turfing system. The plan would include field markings for soccer, lacrosse, along with baseball. A cost proposal will be prepared and considered at a future meeting. The committee will also discuss athletic fields at J.P. Stevens High School. The committee also discussed the need to hire a construction manager for the capital projects. This would be effective as soon as possible. The construction manager will review the schematic drawings and specifications for completeness and compliance with district requirements and provide value engineering services as well as supervise ongoing capital projects. We also discussed the need to hire an assistant for the director of building and grounds. Ken Taylor provided a status report of the projects that are being completed during the summer of 2019. They included the bleacher replacement at Woodrow Wilson Middle School, boiler replacement at James Madison Primary School, classroom renovations at both high schools, and district-wide concrete and paving repairs or replacements. We're also adding additional hallway lockers at J.P. Stevens High School for the increase in enrollment. We'll move on to the Transportation Committee, which took place on 6-2019 at 10 a.m. at the Education Center. In attendance were Richard Brescher, Teresa Ward, Elizabeth Conway, Paul Saxon, Dan Michaud, John Griffiths, Cheryl Rolox, Kathy McKean, and Jeff DeCoco. Rich Benedict gave the committee the status report on the Versatrans software conversion, which will provide computerized routing and GPS tracking capabilities. The staff training has become, begun and the implement, implementation date is scheduled for July 1, 19, 2019. John Griffith advised the committee that all of the summer school and special education extended school year bus routes are in place for the summer of 2019. The this committee also discussed the problems that the district has been experienced with after school transportation, especially regarding the athletic teams. The main issue is that the games begin before the classes, before the buses complete their routes, taking the students from school to home. The state shortage of CDL bus drivers is causing this bus transportation problem. The committee is seeking alternative solutions, such as starting athletic games after four. The high school athletic directors will be investigating the possibility of shifting the games to a later time. 
The committee also discussed the driver and aid vacancies and modified the newspaper advertisement for hires for these positions. The district goal is to hire additional drivers and aides to help reduce the cost of contracted routes and provide more flexibility for our own personnel to handle the after-school activity transportation. Committee members asked to see all the resumes for drivers and aides, then their applicants in order to track the hiring of transportation staff. The committee discussed the pilot program in which district buses will be equipped with GPS tracking equipment so that parents could check on the status of their children's ride home. The GPS pilot program is scheduled to begin in September. The committee discussed a survey that they want to provide to the parents that are not entitled to mandated transportation to see how much interest there would be for an expanded subscription busing program. The survey would be provided through the parent portal and that meeting adjourned at 11.50 a.m. Okay, thank you. So, um, just the, um, a quick question. Um, Dan, the, the proposal for the solar panel, it, is that already out? Yes. It's out? Okay. All right. So the other is for the transportation. Um, the VersaTrans software, we will be using it. It's supposed to be up yep. and running. Okay, yeah. so we've been paying it for a couple of years. <laughs> it's about time we use it. Um, the survey about the um, parents' interest on paying for the subscription, that's going to go on after the school starts? That was what we talked about, right, was that at the beginning of the school year we put that survey out. We're looking to have it so when you click, like when you click on our website during a yeah. snowstorm, you automatically have to see it so if we can do something like that on the uh, parent portal so they have to see it and then they could just take the little survey to tell us if they're if they're interested in it yeah just to, to let the public know because we we will try to um the other we had a, a discussion about increasing the bus subscription um you know to 650 and we we dropped it down um the reason for that is we try to provide um as much a bus service as possible to the uh, the students in, in the district and um, you know but uh, we <laughs> kind of lost a little bit of money you know if we still s stick at the uh, five hundred dollar per subscription so um, that's why we increase the goal is to um, increase the uh, uh, availability for the parents so they can um, subscribe for the bus so we don't have to have so many cars you know dropping kids in the schools which is uh, you know traffic jam and, and very inconvenient to um you know to the parents so but uh, before we actually open it up for subscription we need a um a feel from the the parents as to how many um folks are interested uh, those people who are within the um the, the 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 two mile and two and a half mile radius so that's the whole purpose of that right. um yeah. yes you have anything for the yeah, uh question for mr brusher yeah um he knows where i'm going <laughs> the uh fields at edison high I know we discussed it. We talked about maybe putting it on the agenda. I know we were waiting for our engineering course, which I think Dan sent out. The longer we wait, the longer the project doesn't get completed. So I don't know. We may have a special meeting. We can we can talk about when I, when okay. we go back because okay. I, I do have some questions about the, the contract and timing. Okay. But this is, is this is definitely on the agenda. We already have a proposal. Mm -hmm. um, but we all know that that you know the location of the Edison uh, High School it's it's a little bit Sinking. water, right. um, so the proposal we have it, it's, I think it's a probably more a standard proposal. I, I don't want we to put the uh, turf fields and it just happen like a, a JP that you have you know a water collecting towards right. the end. Right. So we want to do a good good job and and that's why we're looking into engineering to look into um, if we need it you know dig a little bit deeper. Um, put more uh, stone and stuff mm. so that we can okay. talk about it. All right, thank you. Yeah. Right, we That's definitely on the agenda. Uh, we have a proposal. Right? Okay. Yeah. Right, we have the money uh, set aside for it. Yeah. It's it's really just a matter of the engineering to see whether that number is good or, or that number might need to be 60 grand higher. Right. Um, because you have to go because a little deeper with, with stone or That's something. Stone. So, yeah. so we I could safely assume that hopefully by the next meeting we'll have this on the agenda. 
Uh, I'd say by by the uh, August meeting. Yeah, August I meeting. would say. Yeah. yeah, we were hoping to have it for tonight. tonight. Yeah. Right. And if we have a special meeting, maybe it could be done by then, because we we spoke about a special meeting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. The, yeah. It's not on because we're talking about engineering. Gotcha. And um, you know, I, unfortunately, uh, Jean left because uh, I was spoke, speaking to her uh, on the weekend about the engineering and looking into it. Gotcha. So, Thank you. All right. So, uh, any other comments for uh, the two committees? Yes. Um, we decreased the cost of the transportation from 650 to 550. So I just want to ask Dan, what is the plan for the parents who have already paid? We are currently entering every the 1,300 people who paid. We're entering them all in as vendors, and we have to, then we just have to set up a purchase order for them in order to pay them the hundred dollars. So Judy's been entering them for last week, and as soon as they're and we're, we are going to do them a piecemeal because it's going to take too long to get them all in. Thirteen hundred people, none of them are in as vendors yet, so we have to enter them all as vendors, and that takes some time to do. But as soon as we do that, they're all going to get a check for hundred bucks for per student. Oh, okay. You'll get refunded. <coughs> yes. We're not holding our money. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions for uh, Rich on the committee? <coughs> okay. So uh, upcoming meetings, uh, our next meeting is going to be here. Uh, it's going to be a combined meeting again, uh, August 26th um, at uh, 6 o'clock. Now we are open up for um, board member comments. So before uh, everybody else starts, I just have want to um, um, say something that... Um, um, it's, it's a sad news that our former uh, board member, um, uh, Joe Romano's wife, passed away over the weekend. Um, very nice lady. I just met her not long ago, so it's, uh, you know, very shocking to me. Um, condolence to uh, the Romano family and their friends. Um, the service will be at the Fling and Sounds Funeral Home in Forts on Thursday, uh, August 1st, uh, from 2 to 4. And there's another one from 6 to 8 p.m. Um, after 8 p.m., um, the service will begin on the same day. So uh, I think uh, most of the um, district folks have received the, uh, the email about this. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, you know, condolence to the family. Okay. Um, Mr. Brescher mentioned the two um, modular buildings. Um, <coughs> We have put the um, our cameras on the uh, uh, on those buildings already, right, Dan? Yes. So if you want to see the progress of the, um, the construction, uh, go to the, uh, the district website. Um, there are two of them. You can see how uh, the the progress of the uh, of the construction is going on, right? The other thing I just want to say is, um, uh, you guys have been, you know, on the agenda. You probably already seen that um, we have a new principal of J.P. Stevens. Okay, congratulations to Mr. Sharp. Um It's a big task. J.P. Stevens is one of the top performing schools in in a, in, a, in the state of New Jersey, and um, and we hope that uh, he's going to lead the schools, you know, for the next uh, whatever years, you know, um, to go to the next step. And also, I'd like to um, mention a. Um, Congratulations to Mr. Zacchino. Okay. Well deserved, um, long term, you know, district employee, put a lot of effort, and uh, it's a tough job. So, uh, congratulations to you. Okay. <coughs> um, Mr. Shi, one quick thing if uh, yes. Mr. Zacchino could put up my three children. Um, he could probably do it very well. Oh, <laughs> it's three of them? With all three. All three. Yeah. Oh, boy. <laughs> all right. So now we open up for board member comments. Anybody? Yes, uh, Mrs. Conway. Uh, yes, I would just like to congratulate Mr. Zacchino, and I love the idea that we are promoting from within our employees who are exemplary. I just wish we could do it more often as a board to reach out to more employees to show them that we truly care and that we would like to move them forward and show them our appreciation rather than uh, going to the outside more often and transferring people uh, when we can do better jobs. Thank you. Thank you. As you can see in the, um, this year we have done a lot of uh, internal transfers. The number does its, its own 
you know, we don't have to <laughs> advertise that. So, um, yeah, absolutely. We'll, we'll continue to um, do what we can to uh, promote within. Any other board members? Okay. Uh, the other thing, I, I just have it right in front of me. Uh, this is about the, uh, the election, right? Yeah. Yeah. So 10 candidates is running for the school board. Uh, we have uh, Carol Badowski, and we have Samuel Marshall. We have uh, incumbent Shannon Penn, Crystal Maropoulos, uh, Neville, Neville Arrestani, Chevy Pasad Maduka, uh, Candice Nelson, uh, Spasho Patel, Anthony Diamoran, and Tahira Masood. Ten people running for three positions. <coughs> you know, Edison. If you look at all the other districts, <laughs> we we have the uh, the most uh, candidates. The others, you know, they have uh, more positions than, than candidates, it's which is good. <coughs> it's a good thing for. That's for just dying to be on the side. Yeah. So where you actually sitting on the side, it might not be what you're expecting, but <laughs> welcome. All right. So it's it's always a good thing that we have a lot of people who are uh, interested um, in this uh, volunteer position. All right, any other board member comments? I see none, we open for public comments. Yes, go ahead. Hello, my name is Samuel Marshall, and firstly, I just wanted to offer yet another congratulations to my former wrestling coach, Mr. Zacchino, on his promotion. I have <coughs> absolute faith he's going to do a terrific job at his new position. And speaking of school personnel, I actually had one question concerning um, a process that I'm currently undergoing. I am about to enter my first year of graduate school at the Rutgers Graduate School of Education. And as part of the process of beginning that first year, I am required to complete a substitute teaching license for one town, and I chose Edison because it's the town I reside in. And as all of you surely know, um, in order to become a substitute teacher through the Edison Township, one must attend a workshop, and I've been trying to find out when said workshop would be held for this summer, and I'm afraid it's been a little difficult to find out exactly when the workshop would be held, and I'm just wondering why there is only one workshop that is scheduled for the summer session. Any other questions? We're going to answer it only in one shot. Do you have, do you have any other questions? Yeah, yeah. Oh. Hmm? She'll answer you, but do you have another question? Oh, no. no I okay. Margaret? Samuel, we have, <coughs> I'm going to stand right next to you, my friend. Okay, we have uh, several workshops that we offer during the course of the year. Mm -hmm. um, the, this building gets quite busy with enrollment through the summer, so usually late September, early October mm -hmm. is when we have our uh, substitute workshop. Okay. Okay. And per se, um, uh, you have to, I personally have to have my substitute license in effect starting for September, so okay. is there any course of action to maybe? Can we can we talk yeah, offline? Talk offline. Is that is that great. details? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Who's going to meet with me? All right. Best. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Are any other public comments? Yes, Carol. Carol Podowski, thirty-nine Jonathan Drive. Once I was able to view the agenda this weekend, I reviewed what was being covered and started to quickly skim over the finance and finance resolution parts. Sorry, Dan, that's really not usually my favorite section. But leafing through the supporting documents, I realized that I was interested in resolution three under finance resolutions. I had some clarification <coughs> questions to be sure I understood all this legalese concerning resolution two that became three under finance resolutions entitled December 10th, 2019 special election which is a resolution by the Board of Education. And then Lisa Horak got up and spoke, and my weekends of work coming up with questions that I had so I would understand this had been wasted. She effectively, effectively addressed all my concerns without me asking them. So I just wanted to thank you. Thank you. Okay, Joe. Uh, Joseph Johnson, 407 Durham Avenue. Um, this past Saturday, uh, July 27, 2019, from 2 to 5 p.m. at the Metuchen Sports Bikes, 
and Matetsu, New Jersey, the Lena Harris Foundation hosted its second annual three-on-three basketball tournament, and the event was absolutely awesome. We had over 110 people attend the event, uh, and which includes our very own Edison Town Councilman, uh, Sam Joshi, our very own Edison Board of Education member, Mrs. Elizabeth Conway, uh, New Brunswick Chief of Staff, Keith Jones, um, as well as Edison residents, uh, some of which are in this uh, crowd right now. Uh, I just want to say a huge thank you to all of our participants, our guests, our Edison residents, our parents, and volunteers who came out and helped make this event a wonderful success. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Yes. You forgot Connor. Oh. My name is Dr. John Roskowski, PhD. I'm a professor of ethics. I live at 23 Morris Avenue in Edison. I wish to thank and applaud the board for what I saw tonight. Since 1913, the inception of the New Jersey um, Board of Education Association, you guys take a lot of hits. I want to thank you on behalf of Marissa Freeman. She teaches my boys. She is an exemplary teacher. I applaud all of you for taking the courageous, ethical, and upstanding vote to turn down her transfer because she thrives in this context. I've watched the students, my own boys, thrive under her. It would have been an egregious outrage to remove her from this position. I think the board acted powerfully, strongly, and I wish to thank them one more time. And basically, you lived up to our motto, nothing less than excellence. She exemplifies the excellence to which we speak. If you removed her from her context, you would have risked or at least compromised that excellence at least for a little while until the gears in the new class got going. So I wish to thank, if I don't have a chance after the meeting, I wish to thank each and every one of you who turned down that transfer. Thank you very much on behalf of me, the other parents who were very upset about this, and my two boys who just love her to death. Thank you. Have a good night. All right. Thank you. Any other public comments? Anybody else? Yes. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. How are you? Rich Lopolosa, Ed uh, Ellen Street, Edison. Can you hear me? Yeah. You good? You got you on there? Yeah. Okay. Lopolosa, L-A-P-E-L-O-S-A. I'm also a business owner in town. Uh, you guys spoke about the turf fields and the bus situation for the athletics situation. Uh, you answered most of our questions because we have a couple of boys that play on the teams. They were interested to find out what was going on uh, with the their scenario. Are coming, yes. <laughs> Excuse me? It's coming. Yeah. Uh, you answered all the questions, but like Ms. Erico says, we need to jump on this as soon as we can because these boys would like to play on their new turf field in Edison High School. I don't think we should procrastinate too much on it because you know the early bird gets the worm. You guys all know that. You guys, some of our business owners, you know how it works. Second thing is the busing. Good ideas. You got a lot of things going on with it, but you talked about playing the games after four o'clock. Got to remember these kids have homework. You know they got some long games going on. If you go into overtime, something like that, they're not getting home till late, and they're gonna get some rest. So you have to take that into consideration also. And what do other townships do? Do we have any idea about that? Um. Well, actually, yes. It, we okay. looked into other townships. It, it turns out that uh, we aren't an anomaly. Um, yes. it, it, it is an issue with other townships. Some of the other townships do a little better because they have more of their own drivers. Right, exactly. Um, which kind of helps. So, th so that's where we're, we're kind of pushing that agenda so that we could hire more drivers. Right. But it, it is an issue overall, right. um, and we talked about that and, you know, what the students can do. And, you know, I mean, from, from my perspective, if, if they're waiting 
they could get that homework done so they don't have to do homework when they go home. You know better than that. Um, right, right. You They're not going to get that done then. <laughs> we were all kids once. No, he, <laughs> no, he got all his homework done. that <laughs> way. But, but right, that, that is the idea, and, and that's why we're looking at, at all these different alternatives because it doesn't look like this is going to get better anytime soon. Soon, right, exactly. No, we appreciate anything you could do because it actually helps all the parents and everything. You know that. All right, thank you, guys. Thank you. We'll see you again next meeting. Thank you. Thank you. The baseball field is coming, definitely. It's coming. <laughs> it's coming. We just want to do it right because I don't want to, as no, I said, do right, exactly. yeah, I, I don't want to, you know, we, we put in the field and the rain, the, the water start collecting and the kids can't play. <laughs> yeah, well, you got a bad spot over here. So yeah. Area. Yes. Yeah. 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 You, know that, you know the area better than I do. Yeah. We have to have engineers to look at that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like I said, the quicker you get on it. Yeah. You got it. You got it. It's, 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 it's on the agenda before. Before before it was not even on the agenda. So. <laughs> All right. Okay, any other? Yes, Jeff. Not Jeff. No, Matt. <laughs> Matt Revnack, ETA Vice President to Ethel Road. Uh, just a couple things. First of all, Mrs. Conway stole a little of my thing, but... Um, I was ha also happy to see that a number of people, and I've stood up here a number of times about promoting from within. We talk about an exceptional school district we have, but it seemed in the past many times our people were not promoted. So I, like Mrs. Conway said, I'm glad to see it moving in that direction. Um, congratulations to Nick and the, the others from within, and especially, again, Dr. Shalop, who I think will carry on the great tradition, um, being a disciple of Gales over at JP, um, I know that he will do a fantastic job. So I think we're in good hands, and thank you for doing that. Um, second thing, what the gentleman just mentioned, ironically, I was just at a uh, national softball tournament with my daughter, who's a coach for a travel team down in Virginia, and that actually came up, this discussion. You know, the one thing that's affected with pushing back times, and that has to be and should be mentioned, too, things like the rec programs and things like that, is especially in the spring sports time, um, that's going to knock into their time. So that at least if they have a schedule in advance and they know that, they can arrange their schedules around the school schedules as well. Um, I know that was a complaint from some of the people in the other towns, including Edison. We do have some players from Edison itself. Um, but as far as the homework, that actually does give a good time for the kids after school. And it, uh, believe it or not, you're laughing, but coaches can actually keep a hold of that. Oh, they do. Getting they them do. back early, for example, and having them work in almost like a study session time thing is actually something when I coached, we actually did with our players. So you do have that time before going and leaving for the games that can be used for that. Um, the third thing, it's actually a question for Lisa, I believe your name was. Um, being a math person, I like the idea of what you're saying about the borrowing money. Um, it makes sense whenever you can save money. But my question is, and it wasn't, I don't believe, discussed, what's the turnover time if you, let's say, you take $50, 50 million dollars out now, and six, month, six months from now you need another 50 million, all of a sudden you see those interest rates going up. At what point do you need to put in in advance for seeing those interest rates going up? Because if those things go up overnight 1%, the money you're saving on the front end by not taking the 100 million out you're losing when the interest rates go up. So I was just curious as far as, you know, what that turnaround time is. Yes, yeah, please. Yeah. Thank you. So any, any other questions? That's that's it. Okay. The board's process to authorize bonds is the adoption of a resolution. And then, like IBM, their securities are publicly traded securities. So there's a disclosure process, like a prospectus that needs to be prepared. So from the moment the financial might, advisor might say to the board, it's time, we think we should do another tranche. It would be about a month and a half before, month, month and a half before the interest rate could be set. We okay. need a board meeting. It would depend on timing of a board meeting. So the board can be pretty nimble. Um, we don't s generally see in the municipal market those kind of quick, uh, rapid changes in the interest rates. It tends to, um, slowly rise or slowly go down uh, in the municipal market, unlike the stock market where you see it kind of jump up and down a lot. We hope the rate will stay low. <laughs> Hopefully, yes. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Lisa. Any other public comments? Okay. See none. Can I have a motion? 
for the German meeting, okay? <coughs> Mr. Brescia? Oh, we're back to oh, yes, I'm sorry. That's right. <laughs> yes, I want to go home. Yeah, then we, uh, we, we still have uh, some, um, some stuff we need to discuss, so we're going to go back to the closed session then. So we're not going to come. Not yeah. coming back. Yeah. No, we're not coming back out, so. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, we're at Section 8 of the Open Public Meetings Act, Chapter 231, Public Law 175. <laughs> Permits the exclusion from the, of the public from a meeting in certain circumstances, and whereas this public body is of the opinion that such circumstances presently exist, now therefore be resolved by the Board of Education of the Township of Edison as follows: One, the public shall be excluded from discussion of and action upon the here and specified subject matters. Two, the general nature of subject matters be discussed as follows: It's eternally client privilege discussion regarding the same things we talked about earlier because we didn't get to the legal part. Uh, board policies, litigation brought on by former employees. Uh, township litigation, student matters, Edison Wetlands Association contract, ETA grievances, perk, and unfair labor practices. The only thing I removed from that was the SLEO contract, because that's the only thing on there we, we talked about. Um, three, is anticipated at this time that the above stated subject matter should be made public at such time that the need for non disclosure no longer exists, and for this resolution shall take effect immediately. All right, can I have a motion? Okay, Mr. Errico, second. Okay, Dr. Chen. <coughs> Dr. Chen? Yes. Mrs. Conway? Yes. Mr. Patel? Yes. Mr. Brescher? Yes. Mrs. Peng? Yes. Mrs. Ward? Yes. Mr. Errico? Yes. Mr. Shea? Yes. So, oh, yes. Well, that's it. We don't expect to come back. So, I'll uh, see you guys uh, next month. <laughs>